Hi, welcome to another motivational word for the day. Another morning coffee talk, as you were. Hmm. Excuse me. Yeah, so I started this study out this morning. It's kind of going through a couple things, and I found some stuff that is really good. And then I moved on to sort of taking it into a different area. First, I was going to do a study on uh, courage. You know, I was reading through and I read about Joshua where, and this will all tie in, where it said, you know, be of good courage. Go in and take the land. Go in. And he said, you know, you people stay back with the sheep and the women and children, but you men, you got to be of courage and go in and fight until you secure the land and until there's peace. And I even went as far as to go grab my my concordance which is you know you may look at this and think boring silly but it's really cool to look up definitions of words so i looked up courage i looked up the hebrew meaning of it the um the greek i didn't look up the greek actually i just looked up the hebrew and the hebrew is uh amats which is a root to mean be alert be courageous be of good courage Steadfastly minded, strong, establish, fortify, harden, increase, prevail, strengthen yourself, make strong, obstinate, and speed. And there was another one, a uh, to do courageously. Let's go over here and look at it. Shazach, or Chazach, Kauzach. It means to seize, to be strong, to be courageous, to strengthen, to cure, to help, to repair, to fortify, obstinate, bind, restrain, conquer, be established, fashion, force, fortify, make hard, play the man, become repair, retain, wax sore, take hold, be urgent, behave valiantly, and withstand. So this all, I think most people understand what courageous means. But he went a little bit deeper into it when we go into the book of Joshua here. Because there's, there's, there's foolish courage too. It's like, hey, run out there and do this. You run out into traffic and get killed. Like, wait, let's be courageous. Let's look for traffic. Run out, save the child to bring him back in. Because there's foolhardy courage, too, where you're just going without direction, doing something. And that's just, that's another thing. That's just being crazy, right? All right, let's go right to the verse. Joshua chapter 1. No one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. So that right there helps your courage out, right? When you know God is for you, what does it matter? Let's say there's a whole bunch of Legos, and they all could be animated and they're fighting each other but you were the creator of that lego set <laughs> it's, it was unfair basically they had god with them you know but it was because it was their time god said to abraham he's like your people will be slaves 400 years in egypt then they will come out and they will inhabit this land and when they do I'm going to be with them and I'm going to give it to them. Now we know at one point they went up and they looked at the land. They said, there's no way we're going to do it. And God said, because you didn't believe, none of you people are entering in. Even Moses ended up dying outside the land of Egypt and all the people who doubted. Okay, so so when you know God is with you, that's a bit of a boost, right? Like I said, if you have all these Lego toys laid out and you created the Lego set and you're doing your little mock war or whatever... And you could just break all these pieces and build all these pieces over here. God is the ultimate creator. We have to acknowledge that. And that's what we're going to get into in my next portion of this study. All right, and I pray God blesses you and opens your eyes and my eyes and we get good understanding in this. Okay. No one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. This is God talking to Joshua. As I was with Moses, so I'll be with you. And I mean, it's a neat note here. Yeshua means Jesus, Savior. Moses, the law, didn't make it in, but Yeshua did. And really, 
I mean, the law is great. You got to keep all the commandments, do your best to do it, and you'll be saved. But think about this. Jesus is our ultimate Savior bringing us in, right? Yeshua. You know, in modern times, we have Jesus. So, and that's going to offend some people. They're going to be like, what are you talking about? Jesus. You're reading about Joshua. Well, the name Yeshua, Jesus was called Yeshua Hamashiach. He's the, the Savior, right? So we look to him as our savior. He went before us. He was very courageous in the firm of much adversity. And he also, the second part of this coffee talk is going to be about ambition, all right? And he didn't have vain ambition. He, he was ambitious to do good things, not bad things. Okay, but as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. Be strong and courageous. Because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their ancestors. It's kind of like your kids when you go shopping with them. They know you're not going to leave them or abandon them there. They're happy. They're, they're comfortable around you. Now, if you were to forsake them and leave them and wander off, they would be lonely and afraid. But as long as the parent is with the child, you're all, it's, everything is good, right? Okay. So be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their ancestors. Be strong, be very courageous. Now here's the, here's the string attached. Here's the prerequisite for the success. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you might be successful wherever you go. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Everybody wants prosperity and success, right? Have I not commanded you be strong and courageous? Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Some of you need to hear that out there because you're out there trying to do good things in life. Be courageous for God is with you. All right? Let me caveat that into this next one about ambition. Now, some people think, hey man, I'm going to go make a million dollars. God, give me courage to go make a million dollars. I'm going to start a super company and be at the top. God, give me courage to start a super company and be at the top. I'm going to be the greatest at my job. Everybody's going to bow before me. God, give me courage to be the greatest at my job. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to be the greatest religious leader ever. I'm going to have a thousand people watch me in an auditorium. God, help me do this. Help me build my mega church. Yeah. <laughs> do you see the difference clearly stated out there between ambition and courage? Courage is to go. There's a, there's a house that's on fire. Everybody's down here freaking out. The courageous firefighter busts into the house, rescues the kid and the kittens and the animals and the children and rescues them, right? Ambition says, let it burn. I'm going to build a skyscraper there, right? Or I'm going to, I'm going to be the best firefighter. Let me go. I, I, me, my, right? Okay. So let's now caveat this into ambition. Ambition is dangerous. All right. Ambition. Ambition can be hazardous. Those who exalt themselves will be humbled. And those who humble themselves will be exalted. Jesus said that so many times. Everybody who exalts themselves is going to be humbled. Whoever humbles themselves will be exalted. Have you ever gone someplace and you put yourself right up at the top? And then they're like, hold on. This isn't your spot. Go over there. I can remember when I first met my wife. And she was eating with all her friends and family. And I didn't even know these people. And I was sitting at a table over at the side. I thought I'd be up there with everybody. But this was just like... Her and her friends and family at that time, and I just I ended up sitting over at with the kids or whatever or something, because so I didn't know these people. And but on the wedding day, it was my time to be at the head of the table with my wife and and everything. Right? <clears throat> Jesus made it real clear: when you go to a, a meal, don't grab the highest seat, the best spot. Don't act like you're the greatest. A lot of people do that when applying for a job too. I'm the greatest at everything. And they just oversell themselves. And then when they get hired, it's like, dude, you can't even sweep the floor very well. How are you going to do this? So stay humble, you know. But anyways, those who exalt themselves will be humbled. Those who humble themselves will be exalted. Matthew twenty three twelve. The next one. 
What causes, this is James 4, 1 through 3. What causes fights and quarrels among you? Don't they come from your desires to battle within you? You desire, but you don't have. You kill, you covet, but you cannot get what you want because you quarrel and fight. You don't have because you don't ask God. And when you ask, you don't receive it because you ask with wrong motives that you may spend it on your pleasures, on your lust. Here's the whole deal. God gives you, gives us stuff according to our heart. You know, these people come, hey, my daughter is sick and dying. Will you heal her? Of course. Hey, I need a million dollars. And there's one, ex <laughs> there's one example in the Bible where there's a sorcerer, a wizard. And he had power, man. He was deceiving all these people. And he saw the Christians come around full of the Holy Spirit. And they were healing people. And there was miracles happening. It was after the Pentecost. And God's Holy Spirit follows the preaching of the word, right? And this wizard comes up. Simon and he said I want to buy the Holy Spirit so I can do what you're doing how much money for the Holy Spirit come on now and they rebuked him get away from us you son of darkness you're going to be blind because you thought you could buy the gift of God with money so then he was blind and he went around begging that's in the book of Acts you can look it up so if some preacher on TV is saying, send me 1995 for this prayer cloth, I need a thousand dollar gift and you'll be healed. If you just pay me a thousand dollars, you'll be healed right now. Now remember Elijah told this general, he said, go ahead and um, go wash seven times in that river and you'll be healed. He's like, I'm going to give him all this money and I got all this gold to pay him to heal me. I'm not washing this dirty, stupid river. Forget it. And Elijah said, I don't want your money. I don't want it. You can keep it. I don't want it. And uh, so what happened was, as the prideful general was riding back in his chariot, the assistant said, you know, if he would ask you to do some great feat, you would have done it. But he asked you to die, to swim in this dirty river, and you're too proud. Why don't you try it? He said, you know what? All right, I'll try it. And he bathed seven times, and he was cleansed of his leprosy. And he said, go, take all this money and give it to him. And Elijah didn't want the money. He didn't want any money for what God was doing. It's like stealing. Now, if you're a pastor of a church and you're paying the electric and the lights and feeding the poor, yes, you can eat your meals off the gospel. That's different. But anyway, so this, this guy came back to the servant and Elijah wasn't there, whoever it was. And he said, here, here's all this gold. I want to pay him. I'm healed, man. My skin, it's like a little baby skin now. I used to be rotten flesh and now it's pure. So I want to give this money. And the servant of Elijah said, oh yeah, he's not here, but I'll take it. And he took it all and he got cursed for doing that. An evil curse came upon him, right? He was cursed. Okay. So... Check your heart. Check your ambition. Be courageous. Next one. Ambition can, can compete with God in our lives. Jesus said to his disciples, whoever wants to be my disciple, you must deny yourself. Take up your cross. Follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life for me will find it. And what good will it be for someone to gain the whole world yet forfeit your soul? Or what are you going to give in exchange for your soul? What will you give in exchange for your very sanity, your soul? What would you give? So you got to be careful. <laughs> you know, there's, there's a story of, I know of a modern story right now of a man who is probably in jail right now. He lost everything over lust for a woman. This woman was married in the first place, but she went and moved in with him and stayed with him, which was bad. And she's dressed in all contemptuous ways or whatever. And he's wanting her and he goes after her and she films him going after her. And, and now he is in jail. How many men, great tycoons or people have 
thrown away their whole life over a little bit of sin or pleasure or it says that greed takes away the the life of the of the user of the person so don't let things consume you where you lose your soul i mean it's pretty simple i don't need to expound on this very much okay next verse Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, greed, which is idolatry. So in the old days, they set up the little statues and prayed to them. We know it's just you take some gold, you melt it into something, and you set it there. It's not going to help you. It's like if I'm praying to my watch or this cup of coffee, it's not going to help me with my problems. And that used to really irritate God. Once again, it's like the Lego maker. You make your Legos, and you got your Legos. And all of a sudden, the Legos are playing, and you build them, you give life to them, then the Legos start praying to another Lego block. Uh, Lego, I made all these blocks, and I made this Lego set. Why would you pray to a Lego block, right? So watch out for ambition. All right, do not love this world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in them. For everything in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life comes, from the fa comes not from the Father, but from the world. The world and its desires will pass away, but whoever does the will of God lives forever. Now, the Bible is a very cutting book because everything, if you've watched TV, since you were a child, like all of us have, if you got on YouTube now, and I took classes in marketing, um, I also took, well, restaurant management, but anyways, doesn't, you don't even have to take a class in marketing, but it'd be good if you just looked at it, because everything in a commercial is meant to play upon human nature's greed. Do you really need a new car every year? Or did you see that commercial where your neighbors got one better than you? Do you really need a Rolex? Or do you need something of equal value that does the same? Yes, Rolexes are great. And they are expensive because of the materials in them and their accuracy and time and also the name. But if I could give you a Rolex without the name Rolex on it, people... People look and say, man, he's got a Rolex. He's arrived. He could afford a $20,000 watch. He worked hard. He arrived. It's all about status quo. So just look out because a lot of the times, I mean, we know commercials, It's they work hard to sell you something. So just know you're trying to be sold in this world and watch out what you buy into. Don't be greedy because... Things come and go. Now, time with your family, no one can take that away from you. Don't trade it for that. Uh, relationships. Don't let your, your whole life consume you to the point where you lose your soul. All right? So don't trade your soul. Now, I, now I don't, doesn't mean don't go out, work hard, pursue your dreams. Do that. But don't do it at the expense of your very soul. And you'll know. You'll have integrity where it's say, this isn't right. I'm not going to make this choice. All right. Enough of that. All right. You can have good ambitions. Here's a trustworthy saying. Whoever aspires to be an overseer of a church desires a noble task. If you want to be a pastor or a Bible teacher or teach Bible videos, man, that's some good ambition. If you want to build a build a charity and help people, be ambitious for good things. Be ambitious to work hard for your family. Make it your ambition to lead a quiet life. You should mind your own business and work with your hands just as we told you. Now, some of my older retired neighbors got this down to a science. Now, if you're going around being a busybody, getting into other people's business and eh, causing problems, now, make it your ambition to lead a quiet life should mind your own business, work with your hands, just as we told you. All right, let me get through the rest of these. No one from the east or the west or from the desert can exalt themselves. It is God who judges. He brings one down, he exalts another. Promotion doesn't come from the east, the west, the north, or the south. It comes from God. This is according to the scriptures. All right. What do you have that you didn't receive? And if you did receive it, why do you boast as though you did not? Here's the thing. It's really cool when people get Emmys and they say, thank God for this Emmy. 
you know, now you may say, you worked hard for that. You did this. And I, people go out there and say, God doesn't deserve this at all. It's nothing to do with it. It was me. Now, they did work hard. They probably did sleepless nights. They read the script. They got the character lines. They nailed it. They worked hard. I give them credit for that. But who created their eyeballs? Who created them their mind and their intellect? Who designed their very fingerprints? Who gave them this talent? Once again, let's go back to the Legos. If I got a box of Legos, I can take and make whatever I want with the bricks and I can break it apart. And if the bricks start saying, I don't owe you nothing, I probably look at those Legos and laugh. People call me crazy. What are you looking at? Legos, they can't talk, man. Legos, are, Legos ain't real. It's called an analogy, right? All right. So we just got a few more things to get through. This is what the Lord says. Let not the wise boast in their wisdom. I have a college degree. I can show it to you. I've got an achievement. And I've got two college degrees. I've got a PhD. I actually do have two degrees, but <laughs> I don't know. They help you somewhat. This is what the Lord says. Let not the wise boast in their wisdom or the strong boast in their strength or the rich boast in their riches. But let anyone who boasts boast about this, that they know and understand me, the living God. That I am the Lord who exercises kindness, justice, righteousness on earth, for in these I delight, declares the Lord. So don't brag about your money. Don't brag about your strength. I mean, it's good to celebrate your little achievements, but don't boast in those things. Boast that you know God, that you understand he's kind. A lot of people, the Pharisees went around saying, don't heal on the Sabbath. You're going to burn. Yeah. God hates you. You're a sinner. And Jesus is like, why don't you go learn this? Mercy triumphs over judgment. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. All right, religious ambition is a bad thing. Oh my goodness. You know, some people want to be that Pope and they want to sit on the throne and they want to have a million people watch them on TV and pray to them and they want to dress in the royal robes and they want you to kiss the ring. Are you kidding me? Have you ever seen... Now, you may not... The Bible says don't let a young person become a huge, powerful minister because they can't handle it. All the accolades go straight to their head, you know. All right. Religious ambition is a problem too. Matthew 23, 5 through 7. Everything they do is done for people. They make their phylacteries wide and their tassels on their garments long. They love the best place of honor at the banquets and the most important seats in the synagogues. They love to be greeted with respect in the marketplace and to be called rabbi, rabbi, teacher, 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 pastor, pastor, pontificate, pontificate, deacon, pastor. You don't think that goes to people's heads hearing it every day? How many people, oh my goodness, we can name a bunch of them. Jim Baker, Robert Orwell, several televangelists who got puffed up thinking they're the greatest. Call me the man. I'm the man. One guy said, if you don't give a million dollars, God's going to take me. Come on. Okay. Let me wrap this up. I don't think I need to go into that too much more. But watch out for greedy ambition. All right. Some bad examples. I wrote to the church. But Diotrephes, who loves to be first, he loves to be the best. He will not welcome us. This is Paul. This is the Apostle Paul who founded churches, who gave his life to preach about Jesus after he tried to kill Christians. I wrote to the church, but Diotrephes, who loves to be first, will not welcome us. So when I come, I will call attention to what he is doing, spreading malicious nonsense about us. He's not satisfied with that. He even refuses to welcome other Christians. He also stops those who want to do so and puts them out of the church. Could you imagine a pastor who builds a church and gets all these people and starts an orphanage and only has good intentions and then someone else coming in and saying, no, that pastor can't come here and neither can you and you and you, right? All right, I'm going to wrap it up with this one. 
A prophecy regarding Satan. Okay, the arch example of dangerous ambition. How you've fallen from heaven, morning star, son of the dawn. You have been cast down to earth, you who once laid low the nations. You said in your heart, I will ascend to the heavens. I'll raise my throne above all the stars of God. I will sit enthroned on the mount of the assembly, on the utmost heights of Mount Zaphon. I will ascend above the tops of the clouds. I will make myself like the Most High. But you are brought down to the realm of the dead, to the depths of the pit. Once again, the Legos. This Lego says, guys, it's not good enough for me to be a Lego. I'm going to take on the Lego maker. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw down the Lego creator, right? That's scary. I mean, who, who can think pride will go to that level? So this is just a gentle warning. Let's recap. In conclusion, we talked about courage today. Be courageous because God is with you. But don't go after vain ambition. Now, if you're doing something, check your heart. Am I doing this to honor God, to help my family, to pay the bills, to do the right thing, to, to do the right thing? So God is with you. Be of good courage. Be strong. Don't be afraid. Because you're always going to have opposition. There's one story in the Bible about a guy named Nehemiah who was told to go back and rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. And when he went back and rebuilt them, he had people antagonizing him. If a fox walks across that wall, it's going to break. You know, you suck. And they're trying to, to kill him. He said he had to build. He had a trowel in one hand and a spear in the other. It took courage to do what he had to do. And I pray for courage for everybody out there today. That uh, you'll have courage. And watch out for vain ambition. All right, I hope you enjoyed this morning coffee talk. Remember, God's with you wherever you go. Stay with him.